What's up guys, Miles here of 9to5Mac, and today we're gonna to be taking a final look at iOS 16. It's finally been released in stable form to the public, and so let's go over all of the top features you should look forward to getting as this update rolls out. The new lock screen is arguably the biggest iOS 16 feature being introduced. You can now essentially add widgets to the lock screen and customize the placement and style in accordance with what you'd like. Lock screen widgets take inspiration from Apple Watch complications. So you put things like your activity rings, alarms, battery levels, and the weather on the lock screen in this little widget pane. There's also an entirely new menu for adding wallpapers to the lock screen and home screen. You've got different categories you can use to select a wallpaper. You can select a wallpaper from your photo gallery. There's a preset for people detected within your photo library. And then you can do photo shuffle, which will allow you to select a specific group of photos and then have them randomly change. Then there's the emoji menu, which allows you to make wallpaper art with up to a handful of different emojis. You can select the background color, change the pattern in which the emojis are presented and all that good stuff. Then you've got the weather wallpaper mode, which simply has a wallpaper based on the weather at your current location. And it'll of course be animated. For my astronomy fans out there, there is an astronomy wallpaper mode that lets you select five different moon and earth wallpapers that are indeed animated as well. And last is the color wallpaper mode that lets you select five different modes based on a specific color. You've got different gradient options and a solid color option if you wanna use that. Below all these options are a bunch of preset wallpapers based on those wallpaper menu. And then you've got a collections folder which gives you a bunch of different options based on Apple made wallpapers. And over time I've really come to love the layout of this menu and how easy it is to use. Another really useful lock screen related feature is that Face ID now works in landscape mode. So let's say if you're lying in bed with the phone horizontally, you'll still be able to use Face ID and unlock your smartphone which is something I've been wanting for a long time. And as you can see there's a completely different look to the media and music player within iOS 16 on the lock screen. And now you're able to view the album art for whatever music is being played in full screen mode by tapping on the picture in the widget. And the background wallpaper will match the color palette of said album art. And if you wanna revert back to the regular lock screen wallpaper, you just have to tap on it again. And as you can see, there's a little waveform icon in the corner that represents what's going on in the song. So when you hit the pause button or skip a track, you'll see the waveforms go dead. There isn't a real functional benefit to having this, but I think it's a nice touch. And now there's a slightly different look to scrubbing through parts of the track within the media player. And then you can also see in the corner, you have an airplay menu button. iOS 16 comes with new upgrades to the focus feature, including the ability to connect your lock screen setup with a certain focus mode. So if you have a workout focus, for example, you can switch to a more sporty workout theme setup with all these fitness and activity widgets available on the lock screen. There's also focus schedules, which will enable certain focus modes based on the time of day, you opening a specific application or even being at a specific location. So for example, you can set a focus schedule to automatically turn on your work focus mode when you arrive at the office in the morning or something like that. It's pretty cool stuff. You can now also use focus filters to filter out certain content within the calendar app, the mail application, messages, and Safari. So for example, you can set a certain focus mode to filter out all the work-related contacts and messages and only see personal contacts and messages. I've honestly been a big fan of the way Apple's innovated upon focus mode since it's been introduced and all these features being introduced in iOS 16 is another example of that. There are new features for Spotlight as well. Firstly, you've now got the spotlight search feature right on the home screen. So you no longer have to swipe down to search if you don't want to. But if you want to remove the spotlight button from the home screen, you can go into the settings and do so. You've also got expanded search features like getting image search results based on whatever keywords you use. So if I search the word cowboy, it's going to give me pictures of cowboy sourced from Google. A new update I think most people are excited to see in iOS 16 is all the new iMessage features. You can now edit messages up to 15 minutes after sending them. All you have to do is long press a message and hit the edit button. You can now also undo sends up to 15 minutes after you send the message, which is something people have been waiting on for years. And you get a dope animation when doing it too. It's pretty cool. There's also a mark as unread and mark as read feature, which allows you to eliminate or restore the blue message bubble that pops up next to your contacts within iMessage when you've got a new message. You've now also got share play via iMessage, which allows you to watch or listen to content in real time with someone you're communicating with over iMessage. And it'll work with pretty much any app that support share play in general already. So Spotify, Apple Music, Disney Plus, applications like that. FaceTime now also allows you to hand off FaceTime calls between Apple devices like an iPhone and iPad or iPhone and Mac. So now during an active FaceTime call, you can simply open up your other device and transfer the call to said device. You'll get a prompt to do so. And if you're using wireless earphones like AirPods, then it should transfer to that new device as well. Live text is also getting some improvements with iOS 16. And the biggest improvement is video support. So you can now go to a video in your camera roll, 
pause on a frame and copy or translate text. It's definitely not perfect and the font and clarity of the text also has to be at least decent, but it works very well overall and it's another one of those things that makes live text one of the most underrated iOS features in my opinion. There's a brand new feature called Visual Lookup that allows you to long press on a subject within a photo in your camera roll or in Safari and then share that subject individually with someone via iMessage or another application. You have to press and hold the subject for a few seconds, then wait for a line to highlight around the subject, and then you should get an option to copy said subject. And this works for people, structures, and objects like cars and things like that. It's extremely impressive how easily and how fast it recognizes what you want to pull from the photo. It's usually not pixel perfect with cropping the subject out of a photo, but I'd say it's more than good enough given the fact that it can do this in seconds. There's no waiting around for it to figure out what the subject is, which is pretty cool. And I've personally been using this feature all the time. It's probably my personal favorite for this year's iOS update. The Mail app has gotten a handful of really useful updates, including the ability to undo send messages if you made a mistake, schedule send messages if you want to send something later down the line, and there's a new Remind Me feature that allows you to select certain messages and choose a date and time to have them resurface at the top of your inbox. The Mail app also now has improved search functionality and rich link support, which allows you to have better interactions with links within a message body. Safari has gotten a handful of nice features that benefit both iOS and macOS, the first one being shared tab groups, which allows you to add friends or family to tab groups you have set up. And they can update these tab groups and make changes to the tabs. You can also now pin tab groups, which is really handy. And there's now support for extension syncing. So you can install an extension on an iPad and have it appear in the extensions menu on your iPhone. And there's also website setting sync support, which will sync web page settings across your Apple devices all the way down to the zoom percentage. So let's say you're on the same web page on Safari within your MacBook that you've got open on your iPhone. If you zoom in a little bit on the MacBook, then you're gonna notice a few seconds later that it updates on the iPhone, which is pretty cool to see. A small but also pretty big feature that's coming to iOS 16 is the fact that you've now got a battery percentage toggle for the battery icon. So you can go into the settings and you'll see a toggle called battery percentage. And when you enable it, you'll see the exact battery percentage within the battery icon. And that's really it. You'll also notice that the battery icon also adapts the lightness or darkness of the UI of whatever application you're in, but it's a nice little touch that I think a lot of people have wanted for a while. And for my people who are constantly misplacing their iPhone around the house, this is something you probably want to know. There's a new sound for the Find My Device feature. So for example, if you have an Apple Watch and hit the Find My iPhone button, you're now going to hear this sound. And I'm not sure what prompted Apple to change this, but the original sound's been around for a while, so I can now understand Apple wanting to switch things up. But I just wanted to show this feature so anyone knows what sound to actually listen out for when they've lost something. Now, the last feature I wanna talk about that's also pretty minor, but also really beneficial, especially in the long term, are these new screenshot options. Now you'll see an option to copy and delete a screenshot after it's been taken. So if you just wanna share a screenshot with a friend and not necessarily save it in your camera roll, you can copy it to your clipboard and it'll be deleted from your camera roll. And this is a great way to help eliminate clutter in the photos library because I'm sure everyone has at least like a hundred screenshots. Maybe they're intentional or accidental in their photo library on their iPhone. There's a bunch of other new minor features and changes to iOS 16 within all the different apps, but I just want to cover the major features that everyone should know about. If you want to check out that full deep dive on iOS 16, that'll be linked in the description below. But so far, stability has proven to be download ready from my perspective. Pretty much all the noticeable issues I encountered during the beta releases have been eliminated with this final release. So with that, I wanna know what you guys think of iOS 16. Are any of these new features useful to you? And if so, what's your favorite? Be sure to let us know in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to future content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.